Hey, Internet. It's Phil on Build Environment TV. And I'm Rachel. Uh, we've been doing Let's Drink to Gaming and other various drinking-centric shows, but it's all been kind of, you know, cocktails and stuff, which is, is cool, and you can, you know, mix them, but you can't really make a liquor at home. But we have referenced that we actually do our own home brewing, and every so often we'll put up the recipe with the beer and stuff, so... So, a semi-official thing that I'd like to start doing on, on Build Environment TV on the channel here is to um, record our brew days when we brew our own beer uh, and, you know, cut those together and throw them, throw them up on the, on the channel. We can do tasting notes, uh, just other various beer-centric stuff. So, uh, the first one is going to be a brew day uh, of a... Clone that I brewed of Red Hook Sunrise. I got the recipe from Tom Mace, the, uh, the Red Hook brewer. I met him at NHC last year. And he helped me out with the recipe, and I kind of got to rig something together because I like to try to figure out how to do a decoction mash. <laughs> it'll work someday. It'll work. So we're going to head and go and do this brew day for my Sunrise clone. And then we're going to reconvene right here. In the past. In the past. Mm -hmm. In the past, present, future. All the same. All at once. We're going to reconvene right here and uh, do some tastings of it after it's been fermented and kept. Now, I did mention that I was decoction mashing, so I should probably explain what that is. Decoction is um, kind of an old-school German technique. The idea is that you wash out all the, uh, the, the starches and enzymes from the grain into this kind of thin porridge, and then you pull the grainy part of it out, throw it into another kettle, and boil it. And then you dump it all back in here, and that raises the temperature of the whole thing into what is kind of better for uh, enzyme activity. So you get um, actually get beer conversion. Now, homebrewers nowadays normally just go heat water straight to that temperature, because we have stoves and thermometers and stuff that the ancient Germans didn't have. So for this one, I am going to trust in Michael Dawson, from uh, formerly of Northern Brewer and Brewing TV, now of the Beer Engine blog .com, uh, who recommends one quart of the thick grainy mash for every pound of your grist. In this case, I have about ten and a half pounds of grain in here, so I'm going to try to do ten to ten and a half quarts thick mash, and I'm going to boil it. So I've got my recipe on my computer over there up in Beersmith, and uh, I got my tools all laid out. Everything's prepared. I got my two kettles. I've got the standard cooler mash tun conversion. My eventual fermentation bucket. This will be its first use. I've got my thermometer. This thing is a thermopan. And I have a refractometer for measuring gravity. When using a Y-East smack pack, I start them as early in the brew day as possible. <laughs> That's a smack pack. Y-East 1318, London Ale 3. So, what I'm doing now is uh, I'm getting ready with my strike water, initially, to do my mash. And I need about uh, just shy of six gallons of it. So I'm shooting the mash in at about 120 degrees for a 20 minute protein rest. I'm doing this because I have a lot of wheat and rye in this grist and I don't want too much chill haze or to risk the protein messing with my head retention. With any luck, adding the thick mash will raise my mash temperature to 152 degrees. I have a lot of huskless grain in my grist in the form of the wheat and the rye. So I'm going to be adding some rice hulls after the decoction is done to avoid getting stuck sparge.
it is super important when you're doing this to make sure that you stir it constantly, or else you're going to get little dough balls, and that'll just screw your beer up. Right now, I'm pulling the thick, grainy mash for the decoction. I'm going to put this directly on the heat and stir it until it boils. It's dry, but some liquid is going to run out as it heats up and make it a bit soggier. I need to keep stirring this, or else it'll burn in the thin cut. I missed my target temperature, and at this point I don't think it's because I'm not pulling enough grain. I didn't take the temperature of the actual decoction, so it's possible I didn't hit 212 degrees, which is what all the math assumes. I need to make sure to do that. Anyway, I need to make up about 10-20 degrees, and my arms are tired, so I don't want to decoct again. I'm going to pour off some of the thin mash, mix it with water to get up to about 2 gallons, and then add it back to the main mash when it's a boil. While I'm blowing that, I'd like to point out briefly how a single 20 minute decoction has darkened this mashup. Kind of what it looks like with rice holes, and the rice holes are dry and cellulite y. Um, so we just finished the major part of the mash, and uh, I'm going to do a bore off step now because, uh, as you can see, this is really cloudy stuff, so I'm hoping I can settle this out a little bit and get kind of a cleaner runoff. Um, Vorloffing is just filtration. It's just a step where you fill this and then I'm going to pour it back in here. Yeah, that's not going to make the crust back something. This is looking a lot better, so I'm probably going to run this one more time and then just let it Rated pre boiled gravity is about 1042. Okay, I got about six and some odd, not quite six and a half gallons, and that should boil down to just over five gallons. A little bit less than I wanted, but my gravity is right on, so that's pretty slick. First edition, one half ounce, German Northern Brewer. All right, well, everything's chilled down. It's been at it for five and some odd hours. I've got just about five gallons, and survey says, I overshot a little bit, I'm at about 10.54. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna get this in the fermenter. Cheers, guys. So onto the actual beer itself here, and the first thing that I'm noticing is that uh, I think it's a little bit paler than I remember. It's um, cloudy. It's got a lot of wheat in it, but yeah. it's a little bit paler than I remember uh, Sunrise being when, when it was a commercial beer. And one thing that, that is kind of interesting is that it, it had a nice, decent head on it, but it settled down really quick, which isn't something that I would normally expect out of something with so much wheat. Yeah, well, so, so much wheat in it. The other, but that might be something to do with the decoction mash, or I might just have it on, on lower pressure than I should. I think you might have it on lower pressure. Maybe. I think I got the sun around like 12, which is kind of standard for American styles, but maybe I should go up a little bit and see just how it behaves. But, uh, alright, so that's look. Smell? Mm hmm. The smell is. It has that very 
I don't want to say yeast, that kind of fresh bread smell, which I guess is associated with, when people say things smell yeasty, this is what they mean, but saying ye things smell yeasty is kind of weird because there are banana smells out of yeast and sometimes there are sour smells, but this is that kind of bread smell that you get. I've got kind of like plain crackers. Yeah. Not quite as plain as like water crackers, but, and uh, of course, a decent, a decent hop. Hoppy aroma. On it. I don't have a hoppy aroma on it. I've got a little bit of it. I mean, it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite like American grapefruity in your face because this was this was all uh, European hops. It was, no, it's very herbal. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, not very herbal. It's kind of herbal, kind of earthy. It was Northern Brewer and Saz right right at Flame Out. So it's Czech Saz. so it's a very. Um, it's not very pungent. Is a good way of putting it, and it's a very subtle smell. Which is herbal, good. herbal is a good word for it, though. But it's it's got a nice, almost minty vegetable. This is gonna sound stupid, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's got a thick mouthfeel, but it's got a very light body. Is that nice? Like the beer is very light and loose, and it has that kind of liquidy quality. Whereas with the stout, it's kind of difficult getting it to go down your throat. No, you know what I mean. Um, but when it enters your mouth, it's you get that, look, there's not a whole lot of head here, but it's got that foamy feel on your lips. Yeah. It's got a little bit of fizziness to it. It is... Oh. As far as yours go. It is very smooth, and I think that has to do with a lot of the, the wheat. Yeah. It's, it's a very balanced, balanced beer. beer. It's, it's, not, not, it's, not it's not super, super dry, dry, but it doesn't have a lot of the visual sweetness to it. It just has a bit of a... Creaminess isn't quite the right, right, right word. I know what you're saying. That's, that's what I was talking about, where it keeps your lips and foam. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird, weird to say because this is a very, very light, airy beer, but, but yeah, it's smooth. Um, I'm, I'm noticing <laughs> that every, every time, time I try to do a decoction mash, it, it kind of lends this very particular flavor to the beer that. I'm kind, kind of growing to, to appreciate. I, I think because it takes better, better every time I do it. I just screw up and mash a little bit less. With flavor on this, I want to mention because this is a wheat based, and I've grown to appreciate wheat in beers. It's very prominent in here, and I think that bread smell that I taste that is caught before we started drinking is one of the big flavors. Um. The hops that you use, those herbal hops, are there are a lot more um, herbal spices now, and you can taste them in the beer. I think some of that spiciness is also coming from the rye. Yeah, definitely. But no, I mean, like, herbal spices instead of herbal dirt. <laughs> Which is a good smell. Yeah. It's definitely not... The beer that I remember, the beer that I was trying to make, but... It's solid. It's a pretty tasty beer. Flavor-wise and feel-wise, you could probably... It could probably be a session beer. This is a good but summer beer. This yeah. is a very good summer beer. This is a beer you would bring to the beach. All right, so we brewed the beer, we tasted the beer, we talked about the beer and beer and other beery stuff. So uh, I think we've had a pretty full adventure here. Thanks for, for brewing with me and, and drinking with me. Cheers, guys. There's a little bit.